Right, so we're on to um, a means of automating this time. Um, so exercises 3C, um, we've looked at the table and table ob I table objects um, as a means of controlling entered note data through time. Um, and we can also use them to record data and play them back, which is why we're able to use them for uh, things such as automation. Um, so uh, I ask you to copy this bit to the right here, um, which I've already done, where there's a, a, an additional bit over here. <coughs> but uh, this is um, doing exactly what we just saw in exercise 3b. Um, so if I draw in a squiggle on the I table, um, I can read through that. So instead now of, of, of sending note data or uh, sending that data to a means of making notes, I either make note and the note out. We're now just sending it to a um, uh, to a fader, uh, and so that fader moves over time. Um, so that's <coughs> fairly straightforward. Um, and then the next bit, uh, I suggest you add this little bit over on the right hand side here. So here we've got uh, almost exactly the same as what we've got over here. So a metro and a uh, counter which is counting through to 127, 0 to, zero to 127. Um, this time, though, it's running through a pack object, um, and on the right-hand side of that pack object, i.e. the right inlet, we've got um, another slider, or input that's coming from another slider. So what's happening here is um, what, what we want in order to write into a table... OK, so maybe I should backtrack a, track a little. To, to read from a table, we just send one value, and that reads through the index along the bottom of that table. To record to the table, we need to send two values in a list. The first value refers to the uh, to the um, to what's along the horizontal axis, and then the second value um, uh, gives you what's in the vertical axis. So it's basically giving you coordinates. And remember that you go along before you go up in a table when you're um, <clears throat> when you're reading or writing to it. Um, and that's what you're doing here. So as as Metro counts through each number, um, whatever you have in this uh, that's, that's received into the right-hand inlet is going to be recorded into this table. Um, so I've turned this one off, obviously, and if I turn this, this uh, right-hand side on, it's reading through the table. And as you can see, it's writing all zeros at the moment because I'm not sending anything to... Um, the pack object. But as I start wiggling this table, you'll see that it um, reads through. And the quicker I do it, um, the, uh, the the quicker those um, movements are registered. And the slower, obviously, the slower. So I can do slow wavy lines like that. Okay. And then, of course, once that's in the table, we can then read it back from on this side. So that's f fairly straightforward. And if you wanted to make, um, if you wanted to record more data over a long period of time, then you could. Well, there's two ways of doing it. Either you could slow down the metro so that it only records things more uh, over a, you know, well, it records things slower, although not with the same resolution. Or you can make the table size bigger. Um, so if I do that. Um, I will go to uh, a table size of, say, uh, 1,000. Oops, that's 10,000. Could make it 10,000. Um, if we do that, of course, we also need to change the counter object to read and write 1,000, up to 1,000. Oops. Um, but now we have... Uh, more time in which to record. And of course what we could do, uh, it's going to take a while to, to go through that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that'll do. Um, what we could do is to extend the, uh, um, as with all objects, if you hover on the right, bottom right hand corner you can extend it out so you can see more of it. Um, and so you can see better, better better resolution. Um, and again running through that. 
Okay, so that's that's fairly straightforward. Um, we can use exactly the same model to automate more than one slider or an XY slider, so the picked slider object. Um, <clears throat> but you'd want to use the same timing control from each to ensure synchronization. So yeah, if I wanted to use a, a, an XY uh, slider and automate that, I can still do that. Um, what we would do is to, uh, we need to find a pick slider, which is, uh, that's a F pick, that's not what we want. Um, I can't see it now. No, my table. Uh, aha, here we are. There it is. Right. So a pick slider is um, it's like a slider, but you can you have access. You know you can change it over two dimensions. Um, so yeah, we want to automate that. Well, basically what we need to do is to record the data from the horizontal and the vertical into that one. Um, so to do that, I'm going to get rid of this slider. Um, I can use the this pack object for the uh, the x axis, um, and then I can do basically all I need to do is to duplicate these tables like that and have an input for the right hand side so we need to send the same count to the left hand side of pack in that case um, but we'll send from the right hand side of the so the vertical value of the table to um, to this pack object so basically we'll have the horizontal axis being recorded into this table and the vertical axis being recorded into this one and that means that if I bring this to here so this time we're having output from the uh, the left hand table which remember was recording the left the x-axis going into the left hand side of this in order to play back its left hand axis and then the same one for this one to control or play back its right hand axis and get rid of this one so now uh, you'll see that both axes are being recorded um, and if I stop that, I can then play it back. Uh, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Ah, that's why. Because I haven't connected this to there. So remember, the playback, this needs to receive a number in order to play it back. So one number to, to play back, two numbers to record in a list. All right. I'm going to stop there.